fresh off his successful middleweight title defense at UFC 225, Robert Whittaker has some questions. He has questions about the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency USADA testing program, which in his mind contains a few too many loopholes. He also has questions about how Yoel Romero managed to bounce back so quickly from a severe weight cut to appear superhuman by the time he stepped in the cage to challenge Whitaker the following day. Whatever Romero's rehydration program is, I would like to get on that. Whitaker 20-4 MM at 11-2 UFC set during a recent Grange TV appearance. Because he was massive from the skeleton I saw the day before, and him missing weight and looking like he was going to die, to him hopping back in the octagon, it was like two different guys. And taking headshots like I hit him a lot, and he was able to just walk through those shots. You can see why the champion might have taken extra special notice of that, considering how resilient Romero, 13-3 mm at 9-2 UFC, proved to be in the fight. A little more than 24 hours earlier, the challenge he had to be practically dragged away from weigh-ins after an unsuccessful cut to 185 pounds, which ended with him coming in more than 3 ounces over the limit and then leaning on a member of his team for support as he made his way out of the room via Twitter. It seemed reasonable to wonder how he'd bounce back from that well enough to compete for the UFC 185 pound title just a little more than 24 hours later. Still, on fight night there he was, looking as physically imposing as ever and shaking off Whitaker's attacks to launch some blistering offense of his own. This was not lost on the champion. Whatever he's hydrating on, I would like to know so that I can also hydrate on that. Whitaker said, because it turns you superhuman. When I was punching and kicking him, he felt like metal, like a dude made out of concrete, and it was ridiculous. I fought him a year ago, and he didn't feel like concrete. Whitaker stopped short of actually accusing Romero of any banned substance use, but he did express some reservations with the potential holes in the USADA testing process. According to Romero, he was tested when he arrived for UFC 225, but didn't get tested after the fight when he went to the hospital to have his injured right hand examined. Then there are the questions about the whereabouts policy that helps facilitate the random out-of-competition testing program. If you're not home when they arrive, they give you a warning. Whitaker said. That's it, and you're allowed to a year. Two warnings. If you're juicing, or if you're using any kind of performance enhancing drugs, you get essentially two get out of jail free cards. Which I think is ridiculous. For more on UFC 225, check out the UFC events section of the site, view 26 images.